Today we're going to look at uh, landscapes using the drawings of Vincent van Gogh for inspiration. So van Gogh is very well known for his paintings, but he actually has huge collections of drawings like this one. And the reason we're looking at his drawings is that he has this very kind of lively technique in drawing um, that we would probably call mark making. So mark making is where you use very particular marks to kind of denote movement or life in a drawing and he does it in all of his landscapes you can see here he uses particular marks for um showing the grass for showing walls for showing buildings uh, some of them are more free and some are more tight than others he uses lots of dots lots of lines some cross hatching and even here where he might use a kind of a a, a vertical line and he has it closer together in one area than another to show different kind of areas of the grass. Uh, here you can see in this drawing, which is a little like a study for Starry Night, his painting, um, he's showing the movement in the sky and the clouds. So there's a huge amount of movement and life and vibrancy in these drawings. Here he's using dots. And if you think about how simple that drawing is, he's using lots of dots to show the crops in the field and just a few vertical lines. So it's good to remember when looking at these, although Van Gogh makes it look very simple, he obviously is a master painter and draftsman. So a draftsman is a person who draws. Um, and even you can see here, through just a line drawing, he's managed to convey a really bright, shiny sky, moving clouds, movement in the field. In the next one here, he called the sower. He's a, he has somebody sowing crops and the total vibrancy in his drawings, very similar to his paintings. So here we're going to look at mark making. So the kind of drawing Van Gogh did was called mark making, and we're going to look at making your own marks. So attached to this lesson here, we have a handout, and I just have some examples of mark making that I've made on the left, and you have a worksheet for putting your own marks into. So here I am going to just try out a few different techniques. So this worksheet is designed to give you lots and lots of options. Um, and the reason that I have 12 boxes there for you to put designs into is that I have found that by having lots and lots of boxes to begin with, you might make ones a little bit like my examples there, or you might make ones a little bit like Van Gogh's, but eventually you kind of run out of ones to copy and you end up just making it uh, up your own. Um, and that's always the aim. The aim is always to have you go towards more your own style of drawing and your own ideas. And now I'm going to speed it up a little so we can do this quite quickly. So I suppose the first few that I'm doing there are ones that I would use myself quite often, which is different kind of styles of, of uh, cross hatching um, where I would do kind of probably lots of vertical lines, so lines going from top to bottom. Um, and just here I'm trying to put some ones closer together to make it darker and lighter. I'm trying to incorporate some dots, and that's probably because I've just been looking at the Vincent van Gogh ones. Um, here I'm trying ones with lots of little crosses, and if you put some of those crosses closer together, your uh, it becomes a little heavier, more shady, I suppose. It's a little bit like creating shade through pattern. And um, you can see there, they're just like lots of little crosses, um, and it just creates different kind of patterns and different areas of sh light and dark and shadow. Okay, so I think I skipped a little bit there, but as you can see there, I was trying some horizontal lines, so lines going from side to side, which is actually not a natural thing for me. Here I'm trying some swirly lines um, that fit into each other, and I'm just experimenting. The whole idea of this worksheet is to just play with mark making. So mark making is a term that's used quite often, and it sounds quite high tech, this is all it is, is looking at different ways of using your tool, whether it be a pencil, a pen, a marker, a paintbrush, to make different marks and to think about the marks that you're making. And here I am finishing off on the last one. Keep in mind, this is me double speed. Um, and at the end, this is my sheet that I made. So you can do this just as an exercise to loosen up. What you can also do is hold on to this as an example of loads of marks that you found yourself making. So that if you're in the middle of drawing and you want to kind of draw something in a more interesting way, have your mark sheet in front of you and you can always use it. So now we're going to look at Van Gogh's mark making. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at just one of his drawings um, and maybe look at some of the marks that he made to make that drawing. So here's one which is Haystacks. Um, I think it's a farm near Arles. And it's just to look at different ways that he showed different parts of this picture. 
So you can see he used one mark for the haystacks, a couple of different marks for the grass on the ground with stones. Um, and it's worth looking at isolating parts to study. So here in the handout or the worksheet that you have attached here, you can see I've isolated out three of those parts, the haystack texture, um, the one for the grass and how he drew the houses at the back. So why I specifically chose them is I thought they were all interesting textures. The houses is less of a pattern and texture, but the reason I took that out is to show how with so few pencil strokes, he sh he is able to describe the entire house. We know exactly what that house looks like. We know it has this kind of funny turret on it, what the roof is like. And it's just to show an example of how few lines you can use to draw something really clearly. And here is what I did in that handout. So I use that. I'm not going to show you a video of it, but I use that just as an exercise to warm me up trying some of Van Gogh's techniques um, and playing around with the kind of mark making he used. OK, and now I'm going to draw my own landscape. So for drawing my own landscape, I chose carefully and I found an image of a small cottage across the road from where I am here, which has some nice textures in it. So here is my image that I'm going to use. I'm just going to move it up a little bit so that I can start from the bottom. Um, and what I would do is what I do with all drawings. I start at the first place that I'm sure I know how to do it. Um, and what I mean by that is that I'm like, I know exactly how I want to draw the grass in the kind of hedge parts. So it's a darkened area there, which is kind of a hedge with the fence on top of it. I'm pretty sure I knew how to do that. So that's where I started. Um, with this, if you want, you could sketch in everything to figure out where things are. I like just drawing as I go and starting with the mark making and drawing in the first elements that are most obvious to me and that I can I can be sure I know what I'm doing. Okay. As with all kinds of drawing we've done before, you can always change it. So if you draw something and later on you decide something's in the wrong place or it's too big or too small that your scale is not right, you can always change it. You're drawing with a pencil. You know, you're not cutting this out of stone. So don't worry, I always say just start drawing and then you can fix things as you go. So you can see here as I start, I'm using a couple of different kind of marks. So I'm doing these kind of long ones slightly to the side. They're slightly vertical, but a little bit to one angle. Um, and they're showing the hedge and shadows in the hedge and grasses. OK, so from looking at Vincent van Gogh's drawings you tend to think a little bit like him and want to incorporate a little bit of movement into your drawing okay what you will find um, from looking at reference and looking at other artists for inspiration often that artist's work um, has a little bit of influence on you but the more you draw the more you relax into your own style so looking at, at really great artists like Van Gogh and other ones we've done in the past Rembrandt, Frida Kahlo they're a great starting point for making you think about a different way to approach a drawing but the more you draw, the more you'll end up drawing in your own style, very naturally. So here you can see that I'm just drawing the first part that I went to do, which was this dark hedge that's in shadow. Um, and I'm kind of using that to decide where everything else in the drawing is going to go and how it's going to fit in. So I'm probably going to fit most of my reference image in. I'd say I might crop a little bit on the right hand side. Um, and I'm just trying to use some of the marks I was experimenting with and try and use the ones that I think are most appropriate for what I'm looking at. So I always find the more you do this, the more you relax into it, the more natural it becomes. OK. And now I am going to speed it up a little bit just so you can see the drawing, um, but it won't take quite so long. So you can see here as I draw, I'm drawing in the marks, trying to get everything in the right place. Um, and with the particular image that I'm looking at, I suppose I'm drawing in lots of the shadows that I see first. So as I'm drawing there, I'm drawing in this kind of wooden fence with slats and I'm drawing what I can see in my reference picture. So as always with all observational drawing, you're spending a lot of time looking at your reference picture and a lot of time looking at your drawing. You're trying to go 50-50 with both. So you're looking really carefully at what you're drawing from to make sure that's what you're depicting. 
So even though we're looking at making marks and using mark making in this, you're also trying to make sure you're creating an accurate drawing and drawing what you see to be there, not what you know to be there. So as with this here, I'm drawing in other elements I can see, which are probably a little bits of a stone wall, some of the other slats of the fence going, I think it's going up a stone wall there. Um, and as I've said before with observational drawing, sometimes you're drawing from your reference image and you're not sure exactly what it is you're drawing, but you're drawing the thing that you see. So you can see here, I'm going back to my original kind of dark hedge and adding a little bit of extra darkness that I can see. And the more that I work on this picture, the more elements I see that I might not have noticed before. OK, so usually when you start drawing a picture like this, you just see the general detail. It's what our eye does is we get the general picture. And then the more you look at it and the more you look at your reference picture, the more detail you see and the more gets added into your drawing. So one thing that's really important when using mark making to draw is to keep consistency. And what that means is if you use a particular kind of mark to describe something, like the kind of line that I'm using here for my dug um, beds in the garden, you need to keep using that same mark throughout your drawing to describe the same thing. And the reason behind that is that um, our eye will understand in the drawing what that mark is meant to be if it's used in a consistent way, as in as it's always used for the same thing. So you might have two or three different types of grass in a drawing and you do different marks for each of those. But to describe the same kind of grass, you always use the same kind of mark. So what you should notice is that the longer you draw, um, the more your mark making becomes your own style. So at the beginning, you're looking at someone like Vincent van Gogh and probably copying a little bit the way that he drew, but the longer that you draw for, the more it becomes your own. And as I go on here, you can see me adding a little bits of extra detail that I'm noticing. So as I said before, the more you draw, the more detail kind of appears to your eye. And here I'm just trying to add in all the details of the garden that I can see in as much detail as I can see and no more. It can be really tempting sometimes to add in parts that you know are there that you can't see. Never do that. Always just draw in what you can see and it's going to look more correct. You always have to trust that. So now I've probably got most of my garden done, I'm going to start drawing in some of the other bits I see around. So the grass that I can see on the bottom left of my reference picture there is quite different in texture to the grass that's in the hedge. So I've come up with a slightly different mark for that that's much closer together. And I think it's it's describing what I see much better. So with the mark making, you're always looking to create a mark that describes what you see. Now, when I say describes what you see, you're not describing it like a photograph, you're trying to describe how it looks to you or how it feels to you. So if you think about some of Van Gogh's images, some of them show movement and life and vibrancy. And so what you're getting is an idea of how Van Gogh felt when he was looking at these things. Sometimes that's a hard thing to explain and put across, but really what I'm trying to say is that um, you can put, you can include, I suppose, movement and life. Um, and think about Van Gogh's drawings there where he had the sun and he showed sunshine and moving clouds. He's describing something that is not usually what you would get in a still image, but was what he was experiencing. So bring a little bit of that into your drawing is always welcome.
So always remember when watching this that I have this at double speed, so it's just a sped up drawing to make it easier for you to view um, and a little less dull to watch it over such a long time. Um, and you can see here I'm starting to draw in other elements like the house. So with the house, I am actually just drawing in the first shaded parts that I can see, which in this case is the gable end of that little cottage. Um, and what I'm finding is by drawing those in, it's helping me to get a bit uh, to show a little bit more of my fence. Um, and if you remember when we were doing this before, I can see how large that house is relative to the fence that is at the end of my garden. So when you make drawings, you use one part of a drawing to measure where another part fits in. OK, so I always find once you get to a certain point in your drawing, um, it almost starts fitting together like a jigsaw puzzle. You can't put something in the wrong place because it doesn't really fit there. So there's always a space that where your, in this case, where your little house fits in, um, and it gives you an idea of the scale and size of the house by the place that's left there for it, the space that you've left in your drawing. So you can see at this distance. Think about the little the houses in the background of that Vincent Van Gogh drawing we looked at. I see there's a house with has uh, which has a um, a door. It has windows. The detail I can see those at, they're simply little block black shapes. So that's all I'm drawing. I'm not drawing any more detail that I know to be there. I'm just drawing the block shapes that I can see from this distance. OK, so that's really important. Just draw what you can see. i am used some simple lines to show the roof, as I can see it there. But I'm not adding in anything else that I don't know to be there. I'm just adding it in in the detail that I can see it. So at this stage with mark making, a lot of my background elements, I can't see much of the texture. So the texture is like all the shapes and shadows that you can see um, uh, that you can see in a surface. So at this distance, I'm really only seeing a little bit of the shape of fields. I actually can see some houses in the top right hand corner behind my little cottage. Um, so I'm not seeing a lot of texture. So my marks at this point are going to be very simple. I'm not going to have lots of texture and movement because I can't see it from here. So just talking there about drawing what you see, that really is the, the basis of all observational drawing. But even from things I've said earlier on here with the mark making, sometimes we're drawing a little bit of what we feel about a place. So uh, a movement of texture in the grass, even if we can't see it in the picture. So uh, mark making with doing this kind of drawing, you're using observational drawing skills, but you're also using um, the mark making to express, I suppose, movement and emotion. So it's a little bit different to regular observational drawing, but you're still using your eyes to see things. You might just be drawing things in a slightly different way. Um, and actually, the way I'm drawing the clouds here is a way I would draw clouds in an awful lot of my own regular drawings, mark making or otherwise. Um, it's a way that I found of drawing clouds that kind of gives a bit of an impression as to the movement of clouds in the sky. Um, and living in Ireland, we are really lucky to have constantly moving skies. Um, and I know sometimes that means rain, but it actually makes for really beautiful landscape drawings and paintings. So here I am coming to the end of my drawing. The last thing to do is take it. Um, sign my name and date. So there you have it. That's my own drawing made using mark making um, and drawing a landscape. So I would really like you all to try your own now. So either if you can get outside, that's great. If not, you could always look up an image um, and look for one with lots of different textures in it, like grasses and maybe sky and maybe sea. Um, and I would love to see any examples of ones that you've done. So if you've made any ones and want to send them back into us, the Lynn Hall, that would be fantastic. Happy drawing.